this guy walked in and emanated the most f***ing confidence that I had at that point in my life ever seen. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't mm -hmm. exceptionally good looking, but it was very clear like he was going to handle sh shit needed to be handled. And I just remember looking at it and just being like, instead of being angry, I'm like, I'm going to reverse engineer this dude. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. And I did. And if you're watching this right now and you're successful in business or just successful at pro solving problems, but not successful with women the way you like, here's the reason why. The logic and the reason that you use to become financially successful, it works so well in business. I want to meet you. I want you to come and work with us, train my and sales team, build my funnel, all this kind of, I, guys like you, I want to meet you, I want to shake your hand, and I want to make money with you. Guys like you, some of you are physicists or engineers, or some of you are pilots. It professors, is logic. Professors. Graduate. Your logic and reason is like a jackhammer that opens any door, that just breaks down any wall for you. But then when it comes to women, you'll notice, how come this tart drummer is banging the girl of my dreams? Mm -hmm. Why is it this artist or this club host is banging the girl of my dreams because a club host is a sales job and a, and a artist is a, a creative job. They don't speak logic and reason like you use to get rich. They speak feelings and emotions, expressions. And that's the language when men speak to women that is so effective. That's why the drummer and the guitar player are crushing and you're not. And one of the things that happens is you as a dude, you're walk, you're sitting there watching this. And you're like, that's unfair. I've helped the world more. Look at all this money. Look at all these people I employ. Look at all this money that I made. And my wife cheated on me, left me, took the kids, took half the money, this bitterness. Now I'm going to try to be a victim. No, it was just a language you didn't. It was a language you didn't know how to speak. And no one told you you were supposed to speak it. What you're supposed to do is listen literally to what women were telling you. And then that was the answer. Mm -hmm. Listen to Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg. They've got the and Oprah knows what men need in order to get laid. Be yourself. Buy her some and flowers and you didn't know so, so so somebody like me comes along after a while and i'm like hey bro just to let you know when she says buy her flowers what she means is she wants the guy she's attracted to to buy her flowers when she says open up and be nice to her what she means is she wants the guy she's attracted to to open up and be nice to her because she can't see conceive of someone she's not attracted to becoming attractive to her because they don't look at self-improvement the way men do you have to translate for them so these hyper logical men and i love getting them in my course because they're very easy to fix you can use logic. There's one of the things I you know, love about why I built the program that I did is I try to use step-by-step -step logic and reason and evidence, an evidence-based approach to take this complexity when it comes to intersexual dynamics and turn it into a programming if-then statement. If-then statement. If she believes that she's the best you can do, sh then she will stand you up. If she doesn't believe that she's the best you can do, if she believes you can do better, then she won't stand you up. It's an if-then statement. But guys, don't grasp it. If a woman gives you a bunch of attention and no compliance, then she doesn't really like you. If a woman gives you compliance, then she does. The only thing that matters is compliance is an if-then statement. We take all of intersexual dynamics and we crush it down into SQL and goddamn C++. That's what we do into programming language. Mike, and that I was so hard. for you on that, yeah. actually. You're like, obviously we have these conversations every day. We have these most analytical conversations about the business, about yeah. Madden, about football, everything like that. Did that problem of being overly analytical with your decisions and like trying to apply that to intersexual dynamics. Did you have that problem when you were for my, my age or even younger coming up? It was not quite the analytical part, but it was, let me just keep talking. And then let me, if I'm nervous and there's totally a, there's a, there's a gap, let me talk about myself more. Ah, that was the qualify. issue. Qual let me qualify myself more. Cause I, I was good at talking. I was a debate champion. So let me talk more. And the thing that I noticed is that the girl would like sit there and listen quietly while her vagina was drying up and, and I just didn't understand what was going on. Like you guys understand because the, the reason why I'm so aware of this space is because I was so far on the other side of it. Right. Uh, I told you guys about what reverse. was your other side. Like, let's hear your. Oh, dude, uh, 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 shout out to Christina Pincus. Love the girl. She's a friend of mine right now. Uh, Christina Pincus, one time we went on one date. I thought she was like the prettiest girl in all of, all of uh, Austin, Texas, probably 1999. And we go on one date, whatever. I think we kiss like one time. Go on, like we go to Freebirds or something like that. And I was just like so loud. And, and she just told me years later, she's like, I just saw you as a friend. As like, I couldn't, like you just seemed like somebody I just wanted to hang out with and be friends with or whatever. Not even two weeks after she goes on a date with me and totally ghosts me, she shows up to my bar that I'm the, the door guy of with another guy. And I, at first I was mad. And I was like, the Tough. audacity of this mother. And then I just started looking at the dude and he emanated. He's shorter than both of you, by the way, by, mm -hmm. by several inches. This guy walked in and emanated the most f confidence that I had at that point in my life ever seen. And he looked, he had the 
hunter eyes. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't mm-hmm. exceptionally good looking, but it was very clear like he was going to handle shit shit needed to be handled and i just remember looking at it and just being like instead of being angry i'm like i'm gonna reverse engineer this dude yeah that's what i'm gonna do and i did a good portion of it that, that was a point where i could have been a victim and decided to not be a victim right. and what it just changed it my life huh? what do you think it was that made you decide to not be a victim because everybody nowadays just goes the other route and decides to hate and become resentful and goes into their shell and plays video games yeah. and watch so I like, think I think the answer is momentum and immersion. So the the momentum of you did something right, and so like you had a really good chest day in the gym, and you hit your personal record, you're more likely to go back to the gym. One hundred percent. Right. So it's it's momentum and it's immersion. So like consistently seeing over and over again that when I didn't choose the victim route, that the, my life ended up better. Eventually, you can reframe, you can reprogram those pathways in your brain to where you're used to saying, "Here's a problem." Like what Jocko Willick says, "Good." Right? When, whenever something happens, Jocko, hey man, we just made an extra $5 million this year. We broke our records. Good. Hey man, just want to let you know that your uncle just found out he has terminal cancer. Good. Hey man, just want to let you know that uh, you know your wife uh, bought you a new car, man. The car of your dreams. You excited? Good. Hey man, just want to let you know your wife just left you. She cheated with someone else. Good. Good. The stoicism, bro. That was the thing. When I realized the victim, <clears throat> the victimhood or whatever, the chaos or the calamity came, it just passed over me. And I didn't let, I didn't give it anything to hit. I didn't give, there was no physical form for the victimhood to hit or for, right. for the calamity of the chaos to hit. And so because I didn't give it a form to hit, then I didn't ever become a victim. And as long as I stayed stoic, then I understood that I was going to get through it. And you get, you get really good at business and you get really good at a lot of other things when you can do that. But eventually you'll find women that are hyper attracted to you and you're super stoic and you don't react and they're like, you're a narcissist or you're, you know, they start saying, why are you so emotionally closed? And I say, I say, say this to them. I'm not, I'm just as emotional as you are. I just know how to control it. I just see the fruits of being able to control that anger and that sadness and that victim mentality because on the other end of it is all the women and money you could ever imagine, all the happiness and abundance and friends you could ever imagine if you can just grasp that one concept. The Curse of the High IQ by Aaron Clary goes over this concept and this idea that like because you have a high IQ, you think the world and things are going to be easier for you and some things will be easier, but you don't deserve with women, you make them feel a certain way, and then they re- then they come and comply. They react, right? right? They sex is a form of compliance. You do not get her to spend time with you and give you her affection and eventually have sex with you unless you are stoking some kind of emotion, some kind of feeling in her. That is very hard for the computer engineer to understand. Right? It's very hard for him to grasp. It doesn't make sense. And then a lot of times in certain industries, there's a pervasive wokeness that that is telling you you're not allowed to even try to understand does that make sense mm-hmm. you're not the concept of you even trying to figure out how to become better with women i.e having masculine boundaries is offensive is offensive right so like not only are you that's why i said your knowledge about women is in the negative it's not even you're not even at zero you're in the neg. you're actually actively learning things that are hurting you and you have a boatload of money you're a target bro like you want you understand what i'm saying like it's not the excuse of let me do this later it should be destroyed it should be ended now you need to learn all aspects. If you are broke, learn more about money. It's not time to worry about women. But if you are really well fi- off financially, this is the time to learn. 